I'm ready when you are. All right, let's get going. Sorry about this. Go ahead to the hospital. All right, come on, let's get this done. You leave the kid alone in the first place. Damn it, Dave. What do you think? This kid just waltzed into town and announced he was a Congressional Medal of Honor winner, and then I just leaned on him for the hell of it? I tried to do him a favor. I treated him like he was one of my neighbor's kids. I did my job, Dave. I booked him for vagrancy and resisting arrest. You seem pretty well motivated on this one. Why don't you go out there and take a look at what's left of my men? You'll see just how motivated I am, Dave. And if that doesn't do it for you, why don't you go have a talk with Art Galt's widow? All right, Will. I read you. Listen, I got 25 men I can bring up from Monroe. All right, Dave, I can use them. We got a lot of ground to cover. You picked the wrong man to push. No, Troutman, he picked the wrong man. That boy's a heart attack. He may be the best that Special Forces ever produced. Whatever you're planning to throw at him here, he's been through a whole lot worse. In a lot worse places than this. Roger, we copy. Huh. That's the weirdest yet. The dogs say he's traveling north and west, away from the road and up into the hills. Yeah. That's suicide. Yes, it is. Yeah. Captain? Yeah, this is the uh, command post. Would that be right, Troutman? Troutman. That isn't suicide. It's patience. Keeps cutting up and back and up and back and up and back until he finds that gap. And it doesn't make any sense to go away from the road. Dave, get back on the horn with the National Guard. Tell them to move north and west. Tell them to watch the gaps. Keep it closed up.
Come on, I'll give you a ride to the airport. Oh, thanks, I can handle it. Well, I can't say it's exactly been a pleasure, Colonel. Have a nice life. Good luck to you. <laughs>